Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 62 for Wednesday, September 9th, 2015. Your apps. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out the Braintree V.0 SDK. With one simple integration, you get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell, in a different room. Uh, it's that time again. It's time to take a closer look at some of the apps developed and designed by fans of this show. I'm always astounded at the quality of apps you guys and gals constantly submit. It's awesome. I must admit, it's nice to take a break from the themed episode for a change and just kind of let the apps speak for themselves. So let's take a look at some of your handiwork in this week's roundup of apps developed by you. Christian wrote in with a link to his app called Swipes, Plan and Achieve Tasks. This is a task manager that hinges on your swipe to manage your time. The goal here is eliminating tasks that you don't care about right now and putting them off to another time, allowing you to focus on tasks that can effectively be tackled in the moment. This here is the now screen. Every task you create ends up here by default. I'll create a new task with the floating action button down here. Uh, return books to the library. That's what I'll put there. And there it is in my now list. Since I'm at work, I can't return them to the library now, so I'll go ahead and swipe it to the left. Now I'm given a bunch of preset options for when I would like to delay that task until later today, maybe tonight tomorrow, this weekend, next week. If I decide tomorrow is the best option, I can simply tap that to get reminded at some point tomorrow, or I can hold my finger on that button to pull up a time picker so I get that reminder in the morning before I leave for work. And after that, I've effectively snoozed that task to that time tomorrow. Now, when I complete a task from my now list, I can swipe it to the right, and that removes it from my view and drops it into the done list where it's archived if I ever need to refer back to it. Swipes integrates with Evernote, which means any note created inside Evernote using Swipes as the tag will be automatically imported into Swipes, given that note also has checkboxes active. And those check marks sync across as well. Very cool. Swipes also has a nice home screen widget for adding to the list on the fly, as well as managing your tasks on your homepage. And it's fully cross-platform. There's even a web app. Find Swipes for free in the Play Store. Next up, an app that allows you to do with your phone what I used to do as a kid. And it was like peering into the window of another world. My grandpa gave me an ancient radio tuner and I spent countless nights crouched around it, tuning in different frequencies that allowed me to listen in on local police dispatch and fire communication. If I got lucky, I'd also hear some amateur radio and you never knew what you were going to get with those. Scanner Radio was submitted to me by the developer and it's a ton of fun. Plus, Thanks to the internet being, you know, global, I'm not limited to picking up transmissions from my immediate location. First, it's important to note that all scanner audio is actually provided by volunteers who've purchased a scanner of their own and they've signed up for websites that allow them to rebroadcast the signal. Those are the feeds that the developer of scanner radio is actively picking up inside the app, but it goes to show how much of a community effort this kind of activity is. You start out with the top 50 scanners from scanner radio's wide assortment of sources. Tapping any source loads the stream and you'll begin to hear whatever is happening in real time. 
Scanner radio knows and some of these sources can be noisy and not quite audiophile quality. So with the pro version, you're given an equalizer section that you can use to carve the audio into a better sounding stream. You can also amplify what is often a relatively weak transmission. And these settings are saved per stream, so each can be very different. You might want to keep it local so you can peer into what's happening around you. And if that's the case, just tap into nearby scanners. There you'll retrieve a local directory of rebroadcasted transmissions. If there are any scanners you want to follow closely in the future, just tap the star and now it's added to your favorites list forever and ever. And of course, new transmissions are being added all the time. And you can find those newbies in the new additions section. You can enable listener alerts as well. This is cool. It allows you to set a threshold or the amount of people listening to a feed at one time. If that threshold is passed, which means there's a lot of people listening, well, something must be happening and you'll get a notification to tune in. And Scanner Radio has a whopping seven different widgets, so you can find one that fits into your home screen perfectly. You get access to all feeds completely free, and you can gain access to advanced options for $2.99. Find Scanner Radio in the Play Store right now. We're all fans of discovering cool apps, right? I mean, you are watching a show, the sole purpose is to do just that. So then you'll forgive me if I show an app I already featured on All About Android a few months back that's great for this sort of thing. App Hunt was submitted by its developer and ever since I've had it installed on my Nexus 6, politely pointing me towards its community curated list of top and rising apps each month. Think of it as a version of Product Hunt but tailor-made for Android apps. So what does that mean exactly? Well, once you've signed in with your Google account, you'll get to look at the front page. Here, you'll see the top apps as voted by the App Hunt community over the past seven days. Each app in the list shows at a quick glance how many comments from community members it has and whether it's a paid app that's denoted by a credit card uh, symbol there or not. The list is sorted so that the most popular app is at the very top. In this case, Kiss Launcher appears to be trending. Now tapping in, you have the ability to vote it up, or you can tap through the Play Store to download it and install it for yourself. And you can also participate in the comment thread for that particular app, which can be very vibrant. Now in the list, you can change the sort to show the latest submissions at the top instead, meaning you can keep track of cutting edge additions before they start to trend up. Now, top past gives you access to the archives, months past, essentially the top apps from each of the previous months, which is a good place to go digging for apps you've missed. Now, you might miss this one, but in the overflow menu, you can also select top last week to take a look at last week's best apps. Too bad you can't swipe through week by week though. Someday soon, hopefully they'll add that. Overall, App Hunt is designed very well and an app like this requires an active community to be of benefit. Thankfully, App Hunt has just that, even while still being a little below the radar. It deserves more radar. Find App Hunt for yourself in the Play Store right now. Now, I'm positive there are plenty of people who are saying to themselves, self, I really need to submit my app to Android App Arena and maybe someday he'll show it off on the show. To which I would say self, and by self I actually mean you, you're right, you can do that. Just email me, arena at twit.tv with your amazing creation. Or you can submit it to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. Don't think, just do it. I'll be looking forward to playing around with your app sometime soon. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that's Braintree. This is code for easy online payments. If you happen to be building a mobile app and you're searching for a simple payment solution, you'll want to check out Braintree. The Braintree V.0 SDK actually makes it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types. You can start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, uh, soon to be Android Pay, and more, all with a single integration. It's simple, secure payments with code that you can integrate in minutes. And developers, this is all about you. Don't worry about taking days to integrate your payments. With Braintree, it's literally done in minutes. And if you don't have time, you can actually give them a call. They'll handle the integration for you and walk you through it. The Braintree code supports Android, iOS, as well as JavaScript clients with SDKs in seven languages, .NET, 
Node.js, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, and it's elegant code, clearly documented, 10 lines of in-app code, that's it. Braintree gives you an easy way to accept multiple payment types with one simple integration. Quick, knowledgeable developer support if you happen to have any questions. And you can start accepting Apple Pay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, whatever happens to be next, all with that single integration. It's the Braintree V.0 SDK. That's one small snippet of code and you're all set up in less than 10 minutes. Now, if you wanna learn more, and you can, for your first $50,000 in transactions fee free, you want to check out braintreepayments.com slash arena. That's braintreepayments.com slash arena. And we thank them for their support. All right, up next, how about we take some time to shine a light on that wee little developer that nobody ever hears anything of. Their apps drop and everyone's like, wait, who are they again? It's this week's big app. The little development team that could also known as Google, upgraded their Street View capabilities last week by introducing a completely redesigned app of the Street View app. You may have seen it before. It's actually a lot of fun to play around with now. Street View, of course, is how Google has mapped the world's streets with their globe-trotting vehicles sporting spherical cameras on top that capture everything. This gives you a 360-degree viewing experience after the fact. Well, a few years ago, Google brought photospheres into the Android camera that allowed anyone to take 360 degree images with their phone. Now with the redesigned app, those photospheres coupled with Google's own insane collection of immersive 360 degree imagery, find a place inside this app. Here you can interact with the map of the world. You see those red dots? some larger than others, basically showing where street view imagery is in abundance. Tap any dot to zero in further, and finally, you'll be taken to a list of thumbnails from that area. Tap on any thumbnail to see the photosphere or the street view images in action, complete with those little arrows that you can tap on, making navigation feel more like a choose your own adventure than anything else. Swiping left or right pulls up the next image collection and so on. Now, from the main page, you have access to Explore, which is what we were looking at above, but you also have access to Collections. This contains groups of photospheres around the location that you're viewing on the map. You can also see any photospheres that you've published to the map for others to see. It looks like I got to get cracking. You have direct access to the camera app for taking photospheres of your own on the fly. And if you happen to be a fancy pants with an actual spherical camera, the app can actually facilitate the connection and capture to that camera's Wi-Fi. Now all they gotta do is work in some cardboard compatibility and I'll be a happy camper. The new Street View app can be found in the Play Store for free. All right, little pro tip. If you hop on over to 140 Keller in Petaluma, California, inside the Google Street View app, you can actually step inside the Twit Studio and go on a virtual walking tour. It's almost like you were here in real life, almost. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv, or you can post those to the subreddit, that's androidapparena.reddit.com, and share them with me and the rest of the world. The show records every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight. That's at twit.tv, and then just tap the live button. And if you can't make the live taping, the show will appear later that evening in the feeds, as well as on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.